Now, she was known as the saint of the gutter and dedicated her life to the poorest of the poor in Calcutta. Now, the late Mother Teresa is to be made a saint. Pope Francis has officially recognised a second miracle in which the nun is said to have cured a man with multiple brain tumours. Well, joining us now, uh, Gautam Lewis. He was abandoned at the age of three, lived with Mother Teresa for two years in her orphanage in Calcutta. Gautam, thanks very much indeed for joining us. But first of all, I suppose, let's tackle the sainthood business. Were you surprised to find the Vatican are now going to recognise uh, Mother Teresa as a saint? Uh, I think it's great news. And even when she was alive, she was known as a living saint. So um, it's never too late to make the right decision. And, okay, fair uh, enough. Yeah. And, and certainly for the city of joy, which is Calcutta, mm. and all of the hard work and the mysteries, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, the right, it's the right thing. What about your past? Tell us about your links, indeed, your relationship with Mother Teresa. Uh, if it wasn't for Mother Teresa, I wouldn't have had the destiny that she gave me the, the chance to have. Um, I was abandoned, unfortunately, when I was around three years old because I had polio. And um, because of her work with the destitute, the poor, and the suffering due to illnesses, I was given into her care. And I stayed with her and lived with her between the ages of three to seven. What do you remember of that time? Um, uh, living in an orphanage isn't the same as living in a kindergarten. So there are some sad moments, there are some lonely moments. But actually, I was given a lot of love and I was given life. And, uh, and I do remember every Sunday, we'd all get dressed up and we'd have to go to church with Mother Teresa and she'd pray and that was the, sort of the highlight of the week. Now, that led to you being adopted by an English couple and you came to England and continued, in fact, are still continuing uh, a new life as, a, as an English citizen here in the UK with English education, you've made your life here, you've made your home here and so on. You founded a charity of your own uh, in terms of handicapped people being able to fly. You've also got involved in polio and the tension that we need to keep on parts of the country where it's still quite prevalent. So all that, how much of that is, is a logical following of your experiences as a, a small child? Do you think in a way you were raised in that direction by that decision in the first instance for you to go to that nunnery? I think um, I've always had an understanding that there's a greater calling than myself, especially to help other people. And maybe that was instilled in me from what I saw of Mother Teresa. And I've always felt very lucky that I was able to have a second chance at life. And I don't think many people have that privilege. And certainly what I don't want to do is abuse all the opportunities that I've been given, such as education, health, and all the other opportunities through my career. And call it full circle, um, I had the chance to contribute my skills towards polio eradication in India with Rotary International. And thankfully, recently, WHO has certified uh, India polio free. But had it not been for polio, I wouldn't have met Mother Teresa. And had it not been for her, my past wouldn't have been as fulfilling as it has been. Oh, indeed, and how awake or alive or how vocal were your parents uh, about your past and about remembering where you came from and because they, they they had spent time in India so they knew Mother Teresa I presume. Yeah, um, my mother Patricia, um, her original idea was to sponsor my education and someone planted the seed which was actually what I need as a mother and someone to love me, perhaps like Mother Teresa did. And over the years um, I've only had the chance to go back to India a couple of times with Patricia, recently being this October. Um, but I've always been reminded of um, doing good and doing something for other people, not just for myself. So that's a, le a legacy that you're aware of mm. as a result of, of your story and how it crosses with that of Mother Teresa. OK, so the Vatican have now recognised the second miracle, as mm. they call it. Um, both of which miracles now on, on record, as far as Vatican's concerned, involved healing people with probably incurable uh, diseases. That's a very Christian message. Uh, how, do you, how do you play into that, that, that Christian message that we're hearing now? Um, well, I guess the Roman Catholic Church, from the nature of what it is, is a religious organisation. Um, both incidences have been to do with the miracle of curing someone from brain tumour, the recent one in Brazil a few years ago. I think they should be five years from the last uh, miracle. Um, but regardless of whether she was officially sainted or not, I think she will always be known as the living saint of the gutters. Um, 
And I don't know, I think it's good that uh, Pope Francis is, is thinking differently with his, uh, with his role over other, other, other popes. And I think he's doing some very interesting things. And certainly he's got the engagement of a lot of new, fresh audiences, um, like me. Um, I don't feel particularly religious or bound by any religion. And certainly I grew up probably as a Hindu, but I was brought up by the Missionaries of Charity. Um, and my upbringing ever since has been very multicultural and um, accepting of people of every colour, creed, religion, race and, and colour. that's interesting in itself because, of course, Mother Teresa, a Kosovar Albanian by birth, yeah. uh, regarded herself as an Indian citizen. Yeah. By and large, Indian, India has, over the years, welcomed uh, her, her history with, with Calcutta and she's appeared on banknotes and all the rest of it. There were some rocky rides with some of the Hindu political parties. Uh, but, um, you know, how do you view the role she's played uh, in that little chapter of Calcutta's history in terms of relationship with an outsider coming in <coughs> and devoting their life to someone else's culture and country? Well, she's also a Nobel laureate and Calcutta has a lot of Nobel laureates from India. So it is a really interesting melting pot of accepting people of all cultures and all religion and, and all types of thinking. And I think Calcutta would, is probably a city that the rest of India would identify as whatever Calcutta starts to think the rest of India soon will. So, <laughs> course, yeah. so it is the spearheading city of India in, in lots of ways through religion, music, science, the arts and religion. Um, I don't think there is a single human being in history that is perfect and perhaps she has a perception of not being perfect in some people's eyes but it's very hard to ignore um, the good that she's done and and the good that she has inspired in other people and i don't think she has a small history in calcutta i think her impact is is deep and um, and she will become an icon for perpetuity indeed gertrude lewis absolute pleasure thanks for coming and uh, talking to us uh, Thank this you. evening here on sky news